Okay, I wanted to go over this test with you uh, very quickly in under 10 minutes. So I'm going to talk pretty fast. The uh, first question, unfortunately, some of you were tricked by this question, and sorry, I should have started that before, because uh, here we see a high amount of the hydrogen ion. So that means a low pH. A low pH is indicative of acidic environment. So high H, low pH. So B would be the stomach, A would be the small intestine, and C would be the mouth. So if you got caught by the pH monster, right, make note to self. Double, double check. Uh, so answer here, the name of A was small intestine. You had to explain how the conditions contribute to digestion. So the optimal idea, optimal pH for the enzymes that are working here. Uh, some of you were too general in this. So area B was the stomach. And either or, you could say optimal pH again, or you could say that the pH activates pepsinogen into the active form of the enzyme pepsin, either or. But killing bacteria doesn't really help or, or doesn't help with proper digestion. Uh, this blood glucose question, we saw it all of us on our practice test, so most of us got it. We had to say that starch was taken, eaten, right? And then the starch was digested and glucose was released into the bloodstream. And that's what caused the blood sugar to go up after eating. Uh, and most of us got there. Uh, between eight and nine, we had to say that insulin is being released into the bloodstream and that the liver is synthesizing and here we saw a lot of variations on the spelling of the word so stop please right now and check on your test did you spell it right glycogen many of you wrote glycerol that's in the in the lipid glycogen so glycogen is being synthesized in the liver again between 11 and 12 there was lots of variations on the spelling um, the pancreas now is going to make Glucagon. Please check what did you write. Many of us did not have these words right. Glucagon causes the liver to hydrolyze the glycogen and then to release glucose into the bloodstream, increasing the bloodstream, the blood glucose levels in the in the blood. So this was an easy question. This tracing subclavian vein. anterior vena cava, back through the heart, coming out of the heart through the aorta, and then the renal to the kidney, we would take the renal artery. Easy question, four marks. Uh, this diagram, um, most of us, I'd say 99% of us got this right. On the right hand side of the heart, this is low and they all they wanted was the composition of the blood. It was great that you named it, but it wasn't part of the mark requirement, so don't wonder why didn't I get a mark for naming it. They didn't ask you to name it. They wanted you to compare the blood composition. So low O2 blood or and or high CO2 blood or oxygen rich, oxygenated, all the same. Structure Y would be high O2 blood or low CO2, either or and. This question not so um, answered so well because here, look at this, structure function. So you had to relate the structure of X, relate the structure of Y to their function. Many of you explained their function that on side X, X is pushing blood to the lungs. That is true. That is the function. Many of you said Y is pushing the blood to the systemic system or to the body, to the body cells. That is true. We had to relate the function, that function to the structure. So Y is more muscular 
uh, the largest part of the heart makes a bigger contraction. This is less muscular. So that was why many of you on this part only scored one out of two. Last question, we could have used the fancy words. So where we see point X, obviously blood pressure is higher. And then in the trough at point Y, blood pressure is less. So at point X, we either call this systole or we don't have to know those fancy words. We can just say the ventricles are contracting or ventricular contraction, either or. The explanation, so why? Because the ventricles are more muscular. They are the muscle part of the heart. They create a higher BP. So again, this is related to pertaining to structure of the heart. Uh, y in the trough is either diastole, or if you don't know the fancy word, didn't spell it right, sorry, you could say the atria are contracting, or you could say ventricular relaxation, right? They are both happening. Atria contract when the ventricles relax. And why is this less? Because the atria, left and right, don't have to pump. It's a very small pump. They're going a very small distance. So they are the less muscular part of the heart. They are more like a chamber where blood pools. So the contraction does not create the same blood pressure. Uh, explain why BP decreases. And this, uh, if you didn't look at the graph uh, of the arteries and the veins, this might have not been in your, your bag of no. So that would be something to go back and look at. As we move into the capillaries, there is an increase in surface area. So when you spread the volume of blood over a highest surface area, it's going to decrease pressure. The other reason, and this is physics, right? This is the physical reasons. There's, there's not biological reasons here. The distance from the heart. So as you move further away from the heart, the BP decreases. And why is it important? So many of you said because if the pressure or they were moving fast, they would burst the capillaries. No, no, no. Why is it important? Because this is where uh, the exchange of nutrients for waste occur, right? Just like when the garbage truck drives by your house, he has to slow down to pick up your garbage. The blood driving by your cells has to slow down to deliver the nutrients properly and then to pick up the waste. Why does blood velocity increase? Some of you said the veins pump. Veins and arteries don't pump. The heart is the pump of the body. Why is blood velocity increasing? Really because the diameter of the veins increases. There is less surface area. Uh, so the blood can move. More of the blood can move. The capillaries have a huge surface area, so the blood is flowing very s slowly over that entire surface area. I accepted, some of you said the valves. Valves really, what they do, they don't move the blood. They don't push the blood. They prevent backflow. So they're not pushing it, making it go faster. Okay, that's it. Hope that helped.